Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Getting APIs to Work. In today's episode we will look at the question of are system APIs a good idea? And like anything in technology the simple answer is it depends. Um, and we will look at two simple things that allow you to think about whether the system APIs that you're exposing or you're planning to expose are a good idea or not. And there are really two relatively simple things. So the first one is your system APIs, if you call them like that, should not really expose systems. They should expose foundational capabilities that have some value at the business level, right? That makes sense for somebody else. If your explanation of an API is this API is like this because we have this database over there, that's not a good explanation. Right? Instead, you should have explanations like saying this API exists because we have customers and we have customer histories and here's how you can get the customer data, here's how you can get the customer history data. That makes sense. Right? Where this data is stored really doesn't matter so much. For a brief explanation of why you don't want to expose this, let's go downstairs. <laughs> okay, so what exactly am I doing in my basement you may ask um, and we're not going to stay long here but the one thing I really want to make clear is that this is not what you want for your API so to speak right you don't want to expose like the way how things are implemented the very basics of how stuff is working you want to expose something that has value right and this here of course is necessary the systems need to be in place otherwise things don't work but for the people using things up there Right? It doesn't really matter how any of this works and they frankly don't really want to see it. Right? So your system APIs should not be anything like this, so to speak. Right? They should expose value like nice faucets where water comes out and not all the plumbing that makes things work underneath the covers. Okay, let's go back up again. Now, when it's all about value, you might ask, okay, that sounds reasonable, but how do I even find out what has value, right? How do I make this step from exposing what my system does to exposing the value that my system creates? And that is something where I briefly want to have a little spoiler, so to speak, for one of my future videos. It's called API Archaeology. So the idea of that is that in order to figure out what creates value, it often is a very good idea to go back and see what's happening now. Like how do other systems talk to my system? How were these, which often are integrations, right? Well, how were those integrations created? Because very often, right, these were created for a reason, meaning that there had to be something where two systems communicate and maybe that wasn't done in the best way. But it was something where somebody said, okay, we need to make these things talk to each other so that we can implement a business process or do whatever needs to be done. So API archaeology will look into this a little bit deeper, but it's definitely something that I think makes a lot of sense. And the last thing that I want to talk about today is just a little bit of how do you find a good balance between exposing individual things, which I said you shouldn't do, and maybe still having some granularity in what you expose. To give you an example. So what you shouldn't do is just blankly expose a customer database. Because it's a database, maybe you want to switch databases at some point in time, maybe you're joining databases because you get new customers from somewhere else. So don't expose just the database. But there's still maybe information that is related to this that you want to make available too. So should anything and everything that belongs to a customer be merged into the customer API? Probably not. That would be hard to do. That might be very inefficient. So that's another thing where you say, well, I, I only want to talk about customers, but I also want to be able to talk about other things that are related to customers. The one thing that I recommend looking into, because I really like that pattern and I think it's very powerful and I will also talk about that later in some, some 
video in the future is to consider using hypermedia. Hypermedia gives you this wonderful ability to create APIs that on the one hand are self-contained, but on the other hand have links in them to other APIs so that consumers of the APIs can make meaningful journeys between them. Right? In the same sense as let's say you go to your Amazon account, there's a page with an account information that tells you what your account looks like. There's a page with a purchase history where you can look at what did I buy when. There's a page with your um, delivery information right, where you can look into what's my standard um, delivery address and so forth. So all these things are different services, different APIs, so to speak, but they are linked, right? I can get from one to the other because they know about each other. For system APIs, or let's call them foundational APIs, I like that term much better because it takes away the, the attention from the system. For foundational APIs, using hypermedia is a really good model to consider because it allows you to on the one hand, focus on these individual APIs, each of them providing value, but still also providing the glue that links them to each other, right? And say, here's a customer. If you want to find information about their, their history with us, go over here and there you can get it. Or the other way around, the history API might say, I'm the history for customer X. If you really want to find out everything about customer X, here is a link to the customer API. So using these hypermedia design principles, I think you have a good way to find a good level of how do I identify value that makes sense as a foundational API? And then how do I also provide value that connects or interlinks this API with other APIs inside of my organization and then that gives consumers a much better way to make sense of everything that you have. Okay, that was it. All that I had to say about system APIs. So in summary, asking um, are system APIs a good idea? My answer is it depends. They are a good idea when they are foundational APIs where things have value by themselves and you don't need to use many of these APIs to start making sense of them. So they are very important because they are the foundation layer of the various APIs that you will have in your organization. But be careful not to expose your system internals. That's the big anti-pattern that I see a fair bit, to be honest. So for this reason, right, I wanted to post this video and tell you, don't do it. Don't do system APIs that expose how your systems work. That's a bad idea. Okay, that was all I had to say today. Goodbye and until next time.